Okay. Um, error analysis is a really big part of physics because uh, when we're studying things that are moving really, really fast and with really high energies and really, really small things, heck, even really, really big things out in space, um, figuring out how close our measurements are to a true value becomes really, really critical. So, and there, and there are people, there are physicists that spend months uh, and even years doing error analysis, which, anyway, uh, could be a good life, I guess. Um, so, what I'm, all I'm going to show you is how to calculate what we call relative error. And the simple gist of it is um, just the ratio of how far off you were to compared to the true value that you're seeking to discover or whatever. So we'll call this uh, relative error. Okay? So that's like the big picture. Uh, now I'm going to get a little more detailed. The symbols we use for relative error is a lowercase delta. You've used uppercase delta before, right? This is lowercase delta. I don't know why, but that's the symbol we use. Of some variable x. So this right here uh, stands for relative error, okay? Um, we're going to use x naught to be our, we'll call it predicted value. So maybe that's a value that you've predicted with some calculations or something. And x will represent the true value. <clears throat> okay. And capital delta x is not displacement in error analysis. This is, it used to be displacement for you, right? Uh, this stands for our absolute error. And it's just x naught minus x. So absolute error is just how far off you were. Same thing. This is absolute error. Okay? So... If we want to calculate our relative error, we look at our absolute error compared to our true value. Okay, it's kind of technical. So we'll do an example. Okay, um, I'll go over here. Let's say we have a pendulum. And it's going to swing down to here. And I ask you to predict how fast it's going to be going down here if I release it from this height, h. So my question is, I want you to predict a value for the speed at r. And let's say you come up with um, a predicted value of 2.7 meters per second. But remember, our predicted value we denote with a little zero right here. So I'll put the zero right there. So this is our predicted value. But then we actually run it, and the actual speed at the bottom ends up being 2.5 meters per second. Okay. So we were off by a little bit from the true value. So our absolute error is how far off we were. Okay. So to find our absolute error, we would do V naught minus V, which is 2.7 minus 2.5. So we were 0.2 meters per second off of the true value. Okay. So that's our absolute error. Now our relative error is, uh, sorry, our absolute error 
compared to the true value, 2.5. So we would need to calculate that. I didn't get a calculator. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. So this is 0 0.08. Notice there are no units on it because we divided meters per second by meters per second. It's a ratio. It's a ratio of how far off we were from the true value compared to the true value itself. So we were off by a, uh, our relative error is 0.08. If we want to express that as a percent, we would, so to get our percent relative error, we would multiply by 100 and we would get 8%. So you were off by 8%, which is pretty good. I would say within 10% in our class is pretty good. So um, Another example in your lab that you're doing, um, you're not really making a prediction and, and, and comparing it with a measurement. You're measuring all kinds of stuff, right? And you're supposed to measure the total energy of something initially and the total energy of something finally. And in between, there's supposed to be some kind of occurrence, like maybe it, the object dropped, or maybe it swung, or maybe it shot off of a spring, or maybe it transformed itself into a new creature. Just kidding. But the big question is, do those match? And if they do, we feel like the law of conservation of energy has been verified before our very eyes. So I want you to calculate how closely they match. In other words, I want you to calculate your uh, percent relative error. So you're not going to hear me call it that all the time. Usually I, I'll just call it percent error, or percent error. So in this case, which of these two, you have these two values to compare. And up here we had two values to compare, right? We had this and this. Which would be your predicted value? Which would be your true value? Well, this is a little bit different application of this. You need to choose which of these is more reliable. Do you think your measurement or calculation of initial energy is more reliable? Or your calculation of the final energy is more reliable? That's up to you. I don't really care. But somehow you need to decide which is, the, is closer to a, a true value. So to get your uh, percent error between these two values, you would want to uh, find the absolute error between the two. In other words, just the difference between the two values and divide by whichever you think is the more reliable value. Let's say you think your measurement of initial energy is more reliable. This will give you your relative error. And then if you multiply it by 100, you would get your percent error. I would hope that you in your lab will get within 10%. I would hope that these energies will be within 10% of each other. <coughs> if they're not, uh, talk to me and we'll decide if it's worthwhile to try something else or make some improvements or call it good and talk about it in detail in your lab report. It'll probably depend on how much time you have left in the class period. So. Um,